I had a candid conversation with God this morning. Um, I, you know, I, God told me to take 30 days off. And this fell in the middle of the 30 days. And so I was you know, like, okay, we're going to take April off. He said, we're not taking, you get a month off, but not from forward. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. Amen. I'll take it 30 days off. No, no suitcase, no getting on the road. I was like, Didi, I have, um, I don't want to use the word. I, I want to be cautious because we're married. We're one. But, but let me just say, she is overwhelmingly compromised for me and gotten on the road in a way that's not natural for her. She, her, her personality is she's very stable. She's a stable person. And she does better as she's stable. So when she has to travel and be spontaneous and flexible, she's doing that for me, not for her. So I was like, all right, we're going to give you 30 straight days off. Praise God. And then God said, you get 30 straight days off from the road, but not forward. I said, all right, God, then I'm not going, since we're not doing that, I'm not going to waste my Friday and get here. I'm just going to fly in on Saturday, and then we just going to do what we're going to do. And so I was on the plane, and I was like, God, why? Why, why, are, you keep, why are you bringing me here? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, and I want to be here, but, like, Why? Now, I just want to talk to y'all before we get into the word today. I've been blessed with two children, and listen to me very closely. I knew from, you know, the time that they both were young that they were gifted, and God's going to do some amazing things through them. Now, I didn't say that because they were my children, but I watched my son with people. I watched my daughter with herself. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I realize that they both are going to do what God called them to do. Do me a favor. For the next month, I want you to read Jeremiah 29, 11. And I, I wanted to just speak to you. For I know the plans that I have for you, said the Lord of hosts. Amen? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. And that, and that is a part of what Ford is about. God is saying that you're not doing a good job of Jeremiah 29, 11. That those of you in this room, and the reason why you're here is because you're not doing a good job with Jeremiah 9, 29. So watch this. So my daughter, amen, while she is human and she's not perfect, the one thing that I, I have not had to do, and her mom has not had to do a lot of it, amen, um, is take care of herself and the gifts that God has given her. I want y'all to listen. It don't mean that she don't have her struggles and then she doesn't whatever... But she's, she made up in her mind, I don't know from what age, but she made up in her mind that this is what God has called me to do. This is what I'm going to do. And her and God are in, they're, they're, is, they're participating in God's plan for her life. Amen. I, I, you know, I always say this. I was embarrassed as an educator to find out when my daughter was a senior, I put her through a special program for the ACT and the SAT, and they said to me that she had a deficiency. And that she would only be able to score so high on the standardized test. And I remember when Michigan State accepted her, they said, we're accepting you on a provisional basis. My son then had that situation, right? I always thought my daughter was a genius. I didn't know she wasn't a natural genius. She just took care of the gifts that God gave her. I want you to hear me before we go to the Word, because this is why you're here. And I was talking to my son the other day, and... Um, you know, my son just has natural abilities. He don't have to really work hard at it. I was talking to my son the other day, and he, he got his last month or so, he's got his breakthrough. Some things have come to. And I just said to my son, I said, because he said, Dad, uh, you know, you told me to do this, and I did it. I said, son, you got it twisted. You're 27. I don't need you to do anything for me. I'm, I ask you to read what I ask you to read because as your earthly coach, Hear what I just said. As your earthly coach, I know who you are as a player, and I know what you need. All right, this is what I'm trying to tell you. So when I got off the phone with him, he said, Dad, all right, I'm, I'm going to start doing this, and I start doing this, and I start doing that. And I'm telling you all the clarity in which he spoke and just whatever. But I said to my son, I said, son, please do me a huge favor. For whatever reason, 
up until this point, God has given you abilities, but you're running your own play. And then those of you in the room, God told me the reason why you're here is for whatever reason, you're running your own play, and this is a monthly pit stop to get your butt back on his play and do what he wants you to do. You're running your own play. And, and it's not that you're just running your own play, but you're running your own play, and it ain't working. Your play ain't even working for you. Your play ain't even helping you. Your play don't even have you where you need to be financially. Your play don't have you where you need to be relationally. Like, your play don't have you in the best position, and God is saying in Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm not playing. I have plans for y'all. I have a life for you. There's some stuff I want you to do, but you're not getting everything you're supposed to get because you're running your own play. And I don't know what happened to you. I don't know who hurt you. I don't know what took place. But I'm here to tell you, you have a sense of urgency. You don't have a lot of years left down here. You cannot, you should not be broke another week. You shouldn't be broke. I'm just telling you, you shouldn't be broke. The Bible says, for you are the lender and not the, that's what he said. So if you, if you ain't lending, you out of line. You not running the play. There's something in your economics that don't line up with what God is telling you to do because you should be lending and not borrowing. You, 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 you upset because you didn't ask somebody for something and they didn't give it to you. You out of line for asking. You ain't no borrower. You shouldn't be asking in the first place. You didn't went to a bank or went somewhere and now you mad at them. You pissed at them. You going off on him. You talking about I did this for this person. Now I went back to them and they didn't do what I did for them. You should never have to go back to them. If you was lending, you should be lending for the rest of your life. The fact that you're borrowing means something is out of line. You're not running the play. You can be seated. I want you to do me a favor. Grab your phones. I want you to text yourself. And for those of you who run in your own play, just be honest and text yourself and say, I'm running my own play. I need to stop running my own play. Listen to me very closely. When I tell you, my son called me. He was like, Dad, you know, I got this facility and, you know, um, it, you know it's, let me just say this. In L.A., it's the star. Like, it, it, my man was like, okay, we got this city and this city and I got this person, this person. And Dad, this worked out. And he was geek and I wasn't geek. And he was like, it was like, remember Jeremy when you called me Jeremy? And Jeremy was like, I think he had made like 20 grand or something. And he called me geek. And I was like, Jeremy, what you calling me geek for? 20? Bruh. Bruh, 20? Call me when you get to 220, bro. You 20, you just getting started. 20 ain't no ceiling for you. You shouldn't be excited about that. Call me when they give you 2.2 million. Because that's who you are. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That's who you are. I'm telling you in this room, I, I told my son, do me a favor. Don't call me excited about that. You should have been doing that. Do you know who you are? Do you know, son, do you know who you are? Do you know whose you are? And there are those of you in this room, you're running your own play. It's not working. Stop running your own play. Stop doing it the way you want to do it. She says, I don't have a husband. She, he said, you're right. And the last five wasn't ones either. She was running her own play. She was sick for 18 years. She touched the hem of his garment. She was made whole 18 years. She was going to doctors and going to physicians, and she spent all she had. She was running the wrong play. Now listen to what I'm saying. She was running a play. The Bible didn't say she was lazy. The Bible didn't say she wasn't about her business. The Bible says for 18 years, she had gone to physicians. For 18 years, she spent everything she had. Homegirl was working just in the wrong vineyard. She was running her own play and your prideful self. You're running your own play. Let your play go. Let's start running God's play. Come on, stop running your play. This is your fourth job. You didn't quit. You got this. Your 18th idea. This is your 10th business plan. This is your third marriage. This is your fourth relationship. You're on your eighth kid. I'm just saying, Jeremiah 29 11. He said, chill out. Don't, you ain't got to do it. Jeremy said it. Chill out. You ain't got to do all that. For I know the plans that I have towards you, said the Lord of hosts. 
I know the plans. You ain't got to work your own plan. I got the plans for you. All right, so everybody say cheat code. Come on, everybody say cheat code. All right, everybody say life hack. All right, God told me to give you a cheat code. He told me to give you a life hack today. I'm going to do that for you. All right, we're going to go to the word. Amen. But let me just say this to you. Do, do me a huge favor. The first thing I want you to do, if you're running your play and your play is not running, stop running it. It's not working. Stop running it. I'm going to say it one more time. If you're running your play and you've been running your play and your play is not working, stop running your play. How many of you in the room right now, you can, you can, like E, all right, E, all right, that was simple. I'm with you, E. If I raise your hand, you're like, yeah, I'm running my own play. My play ain't working. I'm going to stop running my play. Good. Principle number one, as of today, we're not going to go deep. You're going to stop running your play. I don't care if your mama taught you that play, your daddy taught you that play, the institution you were baptized in taught you that play, you went to school and they taught you that play. I don't care where you got that play from. If you have 18 years and you still have the same issue. So what we're going to do moving forward as believers, we're not going to get caught up in what the church says, what people say. We're going to actually look at what we do and say, is this moving the needle? I'm just being real, bro. Like, I've, I've been married this year, 33 years. I come to realize, like, yo, you ain't even got to, like, I remember when I used to try to make my wife happy. Bro, I was wasting, I'm trying to make her happy. Bro, God told me, wake up one day and just ask her what make her happy. You out working all day trying to please her, then you get to the crib and you do something and she pissed because what you did didn't what what, and now you mad because you put forth air. God said, stop doing that. Just ask her. You know what you're trying to get. You know what she wants. Ask her what she wants and figure out, and I, I promise y'all, it's way easier having worship in the morning and then saying, sweetheart, what you want to do, me to do today? I'm just being real. I'm not trying to be funny. It take all the pressure away. No, I was an academic advisor at Michigan State University. My students used to fail. I said, look, I need you to do one thing. It was like, well, we do everything. No, you did. I need you to do one thing. They said, what's the one thing? Go talk to your professor and ask him what's going to be on the test. You in college now. This ain't high school. This ain't middle school. This man making money off, this man making $200,000 a year off of you. This professor's getting paid. This ain't high school. This ain't elementary. Some of y'all still in element. My, grow up. When I was a child, I spake, I understood. I thought when I became, go, go ask your professor what's going to be on the exam. So life hat, right? Life hat. Number, I love it. Good. Praise God. At least the baby. You know what I'm saying? Grown folk just sitting here. You ain't said nothing. At least the baby like life hat. Hey, man. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, man, let him sit up front, <laughs> Her sit right up front. Give me some energy. All right, so watch this. Here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do, if your play is not working, you're going to stop running your play. All right, now the devil's going to tip you and say, if you're not running your play, then what are you going to do? You tell him, not that dumb stuff I was doing before. Getting them crazy results. I'm not doing that no more. All right, so I don't know what happened, y'all, but uh, maybe it's age. I don't know. But I went to the dentist, and they were like, your blood pressure. And I'm like, whatever. This is because I'm coming in here. White coat syndrome. I come in here. They said, it's high. I'm like, of course it's high. I'm coming in here to get my teeth. But just check it afterwards. So they check it out. Like, it went down a little bit, but it's still high. I'm like, all right, cool. Go to the physician for some regular stuff. She's like, man, your blood pressure, high. I'm like, oh, wow. She's like, we on, like, stage one. All right? So we're going to monitor you, right? I'm like, all right, cool. They monitored me for a couple months. I was like, oh, yeah, it's still high. And we're going to have to put you on a little low dose of this. And I was like, all right, came back. It was like, we put you on a low dose and it's still elevated. So we're going to give you a machine. Took the machine home. And when you take the machine home, the machine tells you what it is. Uh, y'all missed what I just said. There are those of you, hey amen, praise God. You, because you're not connected, you're not getting your numbers, and you don't know what's going on. Real, some of you not connected. You're not praying, you're not talking to God. You don't know what's going on. You're making assumptions. I'm telling you, I, I, when they said I had elevated, I was like, you out your mind. I feel wonderful. They said that's why it's called the silent killer. That's why it's called the silent killer. Because people go to sleep and they just don't wake up. It's like natural cause. That wasn't natural cause. Yeah, high blood pressure. All right, so I was like, all right, bet. All right, God. Okay, high blood pressure. All right, cool. Let's, 
you know, COVID, you feel me? <laughs> Everything when you say, that's good, it was COVID. You know what I'm saying? I was chilling two years just at the crib, COVID, eating crazy COVID. So I'm just going to switch up the diet, go back to what I know. Come on, I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. I want to make it plain so you can get it. I'm, I, bro, I'm, I'm working out two hours. Day, I'm running in the morning, walking in the morning, and then at night, and I'm doing the blood pressure. She barely goes down. She's going down, but not, it's not moving the needle. I'm like, come on, God, I ain't eating crazy. I'm working out. It's not moving. What's happening here? So I called my girl, uh, Rochelle T. Parks, my health motivator, and I said, Rochelle, what's up? Like, I'm working out. She said, what? You, you, doing, you working out twice a day for what? You doing that? Why you doing that? I'm like, because they said my blood pressure was high. I'm about to die. What you mean why I'm doing that? She said, you're doing the most. You ain't got to do none of that. She said, if you're doing this and you're doing this and you're doing that and that ain't working, that means you're not doing the most important thing you could be doing. I'm talking to somebody today. I want to make sure you stop running your own plan. And number two, I want you to know what you should be running. For real, you're wondering why you can't get into certain doors. Listen to me. When you run his play, there... Your problem will not be trying to get indoors. Your problem will be, God, which door should I get into? I'm just being real. I'm getting TV networks calling me all the time. God, like, don't do that. <laughs> nope, don't do that one. I'm like, all these doors open? I needed these doors open years ago. He said, but you was running your own play. That's why the doors weren't open. I got this financial opportunity. I got this financial opportunity. God said, don't take that one. Nope, don't do that. Nope, don't go to Dubai. Don't work with them. Nope, leave all that alone. I want you to do this. No, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Your cup will overflow when you stop running your play and you start running his play. When I, I was so embarrassed, Rochelle told me what to do. Dave, I was super embarrassed. My blood pressure went, let's say, the highest it might have been at the top was like 147, 157. The bottom, the highest one day, maybe 120, 121. It's supposed to be like in the 80s. Top's supposed to be like 110, 109. I promise y'all, I called Rochelle, she gave me the play. Simple, I was so hurt. I was like, you mean to tell me I was running for nothing? Not for nothing, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you mean to tell me I changed my diet for nothing? Listen to me very close. This is crazy. Let me throw this one in. My wife was like, yo, I think you might have sleep apnea. I was like, you think I? She's like, yeah, I can't get no sleep. You snoring up a storm. So I go, you know how you go somewhere and it's like you want to, like you don't want it, but you want it. Because like if I got it, you can give me a mask and it's going to stop. I don't got to do nothing. <laughs> but if I don't have it, then you're going to tell me I have something I got to do. Watch this. I ain't even talking about sleep apnea. I'm just talking about high blood pressure. Rochelle told me what to do. Simple. I'm talking about I was getting up in the morning, <laughs> about to fall out. <laughs> I'm telling my wife, I don't eat that. Oh, I can't eat that. I didn't gave up everything, and all I had to do was, you killing yourself with your plan. God's plan is simple in your plan. God, like, I don't even know why they doing all of that. <laughs> they down there stressed out. <laughs> you just get up and pray. <laughs> <laughs> three days drinking water but I ain't never drank water before I just ain't, I ain't into it I, uh, my whole life I only drank water when I was thirsty <laughs> you feel me I just don't be getting up drinking it just because it's there <laughs> I'm not on that I, I've always had it because it's like I'm thirsty I'm gonna drink water I don't even like the way it tastes When I tell you I drank water for three days and was super embarrassed, can I be honest with you? I didn't even make it to my weight. I, I didn't even drink my weight. Let, why? Because I've never drunk before, so it was too much. So instead of maybe drinking eight or nine cups where I was supposed to drink, I probably did six and a half. And on the third day, it was 110 over 80. Oh, somebody, you missed what I said. Amen. Let's go to work. You ready now? You ready now? You ready now? You ready now? God told me to tell you when you walk out of here, 
when Jeremy told you you ain't even got to do nothing, what God is going to ask you to do is super simple. We complicate it. Even religion complicates it. Because religion turned it in what you got to do to get to Jeremiah 29, 11, when God never said you had to do anything to get to Jeremiah. Here's what he said about Jeremiah 29, 11. He said, because I blessed you, I just want you to love me and I just want you to make it mutual, but don't think for one minute, as God, I'm waiting on y'all to, I'm not waiting on y'all to do something or not do something now. It would be beneficial for you if you did it, but if you don't do it, that don't make, if your mama and daddy, the Bible says, know how to give good gifts and they evil. Your mama evil. I know you think well of her. She evil. Your daddy, he should go, to, he should, I should have been sent your daddy to hell. I had mercy and grace on your daddy. He should have been in hell. So if they love you the way they love you, being evil, your mama was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Your daddy was born in sin and shaped in me. I'm, I'm God. If your mama can love you like that and your daddy can love you like that, who do you think I am? The church or somebody lied to you and told you God got an attitude with you. If God had an attitude with you, he could do something about it. I was being real. If God had a, if God had a problem with you, he could have taken you out a long time ago. And ain't nothing you could have done about it. Amen? So two things real quick before we get started. We're going to stop running our own play. Number two, we're going to do exactly what he tells us to do. We're going to run his play. We're going to do exactly what he tells us to do, how he tells us. Is that all right? Come on, is that all right? I had a group of men come up to me from my church. They was like, Pastor, we ran into some folk who come from your church, you know, where I was. And they asked us, were we doing this, this, and this? <laughs> They came up to me and was like, yo, we, can't, we met them in the grocery store. They said you used to be a part of the Advent movement, but they wanted to know. They saw we were going to church, but they wanted to know if we were doing, the pastor tell you to do this, 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 and that. I said, what'd y'all tell them? <laughs> they was like, well, pastor, I'm going to be real. Some of the stuff they said, we didn't know what they were talking about. I was like, okay. Do you want to know what they were talking about? They say, oh, if you feel like we do, but we just don't know. Like I said, do you want to know what they were talking about? I said, because if you want to know, we can go study it. I said, do me a favor, though. Don't do it because they were doing it. If you do it, we're going to study the benefits of doing it. And we're going to make sure we're doing it in the context of the relationship, not because we're trying to win favor from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking to somebody. When you leave here, daddy is going to introduce you to some stuff you've never been introduced to when you go into that word. There's some stuff that's going to be said in prayer that you've never heard before. You have to decide based on that relationship what you're going to do with that information. No, today is about you. Amen. Today is about you and God. It ain't about nothing else. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that all right? And if you're blessed to get to some of that stuff, you're going to get to it. But the last time I checked, he got saved on the cross. He didn't have had two weeks to go to church and figure out what the rules were. <laughs> he was on the cross and was like, yo, can you save me from here? He's like, I got you. Do you believe? Yeah, I believe. You want to go to the heaven? Yeah, I want to go to heaven. All right, you, as of today, you good. So that's somebody in this room. It's about to happen for you instantly. You're not going to have to do nothing for it. It's about to happen. You, actually, you already had it. You're about to finally receive what God has for you. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Let's walk through these. Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Amen. I, I already, I only got 25 minutes. All right. First slide, please. I'm super behind. All right. So we know what forward means, and we heard it in the sermon. I love it. It's the song. Onward so as to make progress toward a successful conclusion. This is, 20, this is Jeremiah 29, 11. This is what God wants for you. Forward. Too many of us have gone backwards. God is asking us to go so from this day forward, I'm not asking for perfect, but I'm asking you just to go forward. Get, be like an airplane that doesn't have a, a reverse. Be like an airplane, because you were saying every vehicle has to, airplane don't. Only way it get back is somebody pushing. So from now on, I don't want you to go back unless God pushing you back. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? We're going, I just say it with me. We're going forward. We're going, come on, we're going. 
in our finances. We're going in our relationships. We're going forward in our health. Huh? Huh? I want you to start looking at your bank account. And if it ain't going forward, I want you to say, God, what's wrong? I'm supposed to go forward. He's going to tell you what you're supposed to do. God, me and my girl, we keep beefing. What's going wrong? He's going to show you what you're supposed to do. God, my health, my, my guy, high blood pressure. He's going to show you what to do. Praise God. Let's go to the next slide, please. Let's go to the next slide. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Is it his mother named Mary? And aren't his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judah? <laughs> he who? And when Jesus went around healing the sick, curing the lepers, teaching with great authority, wisdom, great crowds followed him. People looked at his family background and they couldn't understand it. Is that Jesus? Look, this thing is so crazy, y'all. They didn't even go up as Jesus. They went as that's Mary baby. Now, I know he ain't walking around here talking about he the Savior. Mary baby, the one who got pregnant without getting pregnant? Come on now. Okay, you pregnant, but the Holy Ghost got you. <laughs> we supposed to believe that? <laughs> Come Mary, you know how it is. Now, years and years from now, people are going to talk a certain way. But you know how it is when you're in elementary school, high school, you're in college. People who you went to school with can't believe that's you. Because they was close to you. They were too close to know that you could. But this is what happens when the Holy Ghost get in. Oh, uh, Jeremy talked about it with the butterfly. What happens is you dead. They just remember you when you were here. You ain't even, you don't even, have, you ain't even, you don't even know who they talk about. You ain't even you no more. <laughs> You, don't even, you ain't even you no more. You didn't die the cocoon. You didn't die. You didn't went through whatever you had to go through, and you didn't came out on the other side. They could not believe that this was Jesus, Mary's baby. Joseph, the one who said he know that wasn't, but he raised him anyway. Now, them other three, I don't even know if the other three is or not. Come on, come on, come on. I want y'all to watch something. I want y'all to watch something. I was, I was reading and I said, God, I'm reading. I see it. What are you trying to say, God? What do you want me to tell the people? God told me to tell you that he strategically brought Jesus Christ in the world the way he brought him in because he didn't want him to get caught up with that other stuff. He only wanted to get caught up. I'm, okay, okay. I'm going to say it because I'm going to give it to you. Hallelujah, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. He said, I don't want any fleshly representation on my son. I want it to be clear. Huh? You tripping on the fact that something's happening in your life. That's God. God says, I want to make sure when my son is born that they do not accredit his great authority. They do not accredit his wisdom. They do not accredit his ability to make folk walk on water. They do not accredit the fact that he took the blind and let them see. I want to make sure they don't accredit that to a degree. Because you know how they do. They don't love you, but when you start doing great, now you theirs. <laughs> huh? Huh? Now all of a sudden, now that you're doing your thing, now all of a sudden, they, you like, oh, he's one of ours. He's one of us. But, but, but it, it wasn't all. all they, God said, I want to make sure that they don't say anybody else is responsible for your life other than me. Oh, y'all missed what I just said. Please hear me. You've been trying to blow up and you're trying to blow up the wrong way. You've been chasing money. The very thing that God created from a tree. You now worship in the tree instead of the God that created the tree. You got your priorities wrong. You trying to run every day. Try, you got three jobs trying to blow up when you ain't even got, it don't even take three jobs to blow up. Huh? Let's go back to that other one. I want to read something. I want to show you something. This is deep. When you leave, I just need to do one thing. Stop running your own play. Start running God's play and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Whatever it is you're trying to do, do it through Christ. And if you can't do it through Christ, that's an indicator that it cannot be done. 
That's an indicator that it's not supposed to happen. The reason why that relationship is not working, not because the relationship can work if you work harder. The reason why it's not working is because it is not a part of Jeremiah 29, 11. But you just going to force it. Your mama done told you, you just going to force it. You in jail now dealing with the wrong. You done got physically abused dealing with the wrong. He almost took your life dealing with the wrong. God wants you on 20 mile, 29 Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 11. He ain't got nothing against you. He's trying to run a play, and you're running a different play. That's why your bank account, you and your fourth idea, you didn't borrow money that you don't even have. You keep borrowing money. For, you at Jeremiah 29, if you would just do what God told you to do. Let's go back up. Come on, let's go back up. I want to show you all something. Hallelujah. Watch this. Watch this. They asked, his father was just a carpenter. Nothing special. How can his son be doing miracles and be this influential? Where does Jesus get the wisdom to teach so much? They were looking at his natural father. At his background and his training. They did not realize who his heavenly father was. I'm here to tell you, if you would just start with your heavenly father, you'd be on a whole nother level right now. Here, I'm about, look, it ain't, we ain't got, we're not going to go deep today. I'm, I'm telling you, your life is screwed up because you've been making your own decisions, doing your own stuff, your own way. And God told me to tell you that he still has the plan intact for you. If you would just stop doing what you're doing today and you would start doing what he wants you to do. He says, I can retro all your praises if you just stop today. I got more retro all up. It's some money you got coming your way. You ain't even know it was coming. He gonna retro it. Hallelujah, praise God. He want to get you out the natural into the, talking to my mom yesterday, and uh, I told my mom, I said, Ma, I love you, Ma, but you got to do me a favor. She said, what? I said, Ma, when we talk, you got to stop talking that working class talk. Say, Ma, your son not in the working class. I'm in the wealthy class, Ma. I said, Ma, I love you. I ain't trying to be disrespectful. I would never disrespect you, but we're on the same team, and so you got to help me, right? So when we talk, you, you got to stop. You know, you, uh, for those of you who listen to the podcast, you know, CJ was like, his fa family was like, we're going to go down to the grocery store. They got, they got, uh, they got uh, uh, meat for uh, $3.55 pound. Milk is on sale at this one. So he's like, you're going to drive from here to go over there to get that. And you're going to go over here and you're going to get that. But the whole concept, somebody asked me the other day, they was like, E, can you use the bro, have you seen the price of gas? I was like, A actually, no. I haven't seen it. I just fill up. I haven't seen it. I'm a lender. I got other stuff that I'm looking at. I'm looking at kids' college tuition and helping them go to school. I'm putting money aside for kids to go to Dubai. I don't have time to look at gas prices. That, that's borrowers, my, that's, what, that's a borrowers conversation, how much something costs. I'm a lender, we don't, we don't have those kind of conversations. I said, Ma, I, listen to me, I love you. And if it had not been for the working class, we wouldn't be where we are right now. But that Ma, you from the baby boomer, we didn't hit three, four generations since then. It's a new language, I need you to talk wealth talk. When you talk to me, I need you to talk wealth talk. Come on, come on. Son, how much is that apartment? I don't know. That's a tax write-off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how much it is. That, that's my accountant. That, that, they write that off. That's a business expense. I don't know. Well, if they paying this and they paying that, then what's going to happen? They need to have a home at some point. I said, they got, we got three. So when we die, they got three. They get two and they split the other one for cash. Ma, it's a different, Ma, we're not on the net. There are those of you in this room, your problem is, you know who God is. Some of you have worshiped God, but you're still operating in the natural. You're not operating in the spirit. I'm not talking about going to church no more. I've been to church. I've seen church folk. I've seen people do the Sabbath school. I've watched people eat a certain way. That ain't got nothing to do with being in the power, the wisdom, and the authority of the Holy Ghost. That's two different things. I know people who read the Bible back and forth. They still ain't got no power. 
I watch people pray. They prayers hit the ceiling and come back. We're not talking religion. I'm talking about getting a relationship with God that will give you an authority and a power that would allow you to walk on the earth differently. Nobody got time to be going to church and we're going to still do. And so what they were saying was, how can he do this? I know what school he went to. How can he do this? I know his mama. How can he do this? I know his daddy. How can he do this? They grew up in Egypt. How, how can he do it? He didn't even grow up with us. They had to hide somewhere. I know where he was born, in a manger. I'm looking at his natural circumstances. I'm looking at his natural life, and this don't add up. got married at 19 coming out of Oakwood they should be divorced you are absolutely right in the natural you ain't lying <laughs> you telling the truth my mama got pregnant with me at 17 years old my father had five kids by five different women you absolutely right you're not lying you just misguided you talking in the natural we ain't in the natural no more we in the spirit Oh, you missed what I just said. We operating in the spirit. The boy at high school drop out, how he get a PhD? I, I connected to the spiritual, and when I connected to God, he started downloading stuff that I didn't get when I was in elementary school. He started downloading stuff that I didn't take serious in middle school. He started downloading stuff that I didn't get in high school. I dropped out. He started downloading stuff as if I was in middle school all over again. Started doing stuff with my brain that blew my mind. I invite you today to get out of the natural. I ain't never had a PR person. I'm not telling you don't have one. I'm just telling you I had one. Just not in the natural. I ain't never had no agent. I'm telling you, I ain't never had. We did it. We did this on YouTube, y'all. We did this on Instagram. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We blew up. We ain't been on nobody's TV. We blew up. We ain't been on nobody's network. We blew up. N Nike, Under Armour, ain't nobody sponsored us. We blew up. They say, how in the world did this kid, who did he study under? Did he study Tony Robbins? Nope, that don't sound like Tony Robbins. <laughs> it's got to be Les Brown. Les is the black motivator. He, got, he went through motivate. He went through less. Nope, that don't sound like a little bit. I, I, he sound like he's hungry, but it's a little different. Where does this kid come from? I'm they ask, where does he come from? They study my background. Where does he come? How did he go from being a high school driver? How did he go from not, not knowing his biological father? How did he go from sleeping in the bed, uh, uh, abandoned building? How did he go from sleeping in the car? How did he become the number one motivational speaker in the world? I, I got baptized at a revival, Pastor Willis, uh, Detroit, Michigan. I got baptized. I gave my life to Christ, and I started tapping in. I started tapping in. Oh, as a matter of fact, I didn't just tap in, I tapped out. I'm like, God, I can't do this. I went to college and was like, whoa, I can't do this. They were singing songs. Everybody knew them. I didn't know none of them. I was like, what in the devil? Side by side. I was like, what are they singing? They had their own little, may the Lord watch me twin us while we have someone from, I, was, I didn't know none of that stuff. I took a test and they was like, oh, you got, where's your SAT? I was like, I don't got one. Where's your ACT? I was like, I don't have no ACT. They like, all right, you're going to have to take a test. I took the test. It was like, you take it all zero level. I didn't even know that zero level, you only get credit for it. I was geek. But you got uh, zero, zero, one math. <laughs> Eight o'clock in the morning, bro, Tuesdays and Thursdays. What? I'll see you in class. Uh, you won't see me. <laughs> you won't see me. I'm like, I, you, I'll see you English. I'll see you over there. English class, like, uh, what you got? Zero, zero, one. I was geek. It was like a pattern. I was like zero, bro, I don't know what, but I took that test. I'm zero, zero, one. It's like three, four, zero, ah, bro. <laughs> Look at this. I went to class about four of us. I'm like, where everybody at? <laughs> uh, they in English 101. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm, I've seen all my homies. Like, bro, I ain't seen none of y'all. Y'all don't go to class? Uh, we do, but just a different one that you go to. I'm telling you, that's where, but, but God is like, I don't care where you start. As soon as you tap out, I'm going to tap in. As soon as you get, and there are those of you who are not where you want to be because you are in the natural. And then there's a group of you, you go from the natural to the spiritual, from the natural to the spiritual, and then you're upset because you're not where you want to be. And you're not where you want to be because you keep going from the natural to the spirit. God is saying, I hate that. 
I love Christians because Christians be dogging out non-believers. I, non-believers got it better than y'all. They cold. I said, that's the, I, hate, I hate the natural. Then you're going to try to come back into the spirit. And then natural. And then you're going to try to come. He said, you lukewarm. I'll spit you out. Depart from me. I would prefer you either be natural or spiritual. I prefer you be hot or cold. You all, you going back and forth, back and forth. My church was so packed last week well, because of Easter week. Everybody was in there. I'm like, I ain't seeing you. <laughs> Let me say this as we get ready to wrap this thing up. Let me say this to you. I'm going to tell you this. and I'm going I'm 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 to say it in a way where I'm going to be kind and try to help you. In the natural, you can play games and get some of the natural stuff. You can rob a bank and get away with it and be rich, or you can do the little fraud scheme and get away with it. You can put money here, take people money. You can do charge card schemes. You can fake and have a degree that you didn't earn and get a job that you never. Let me tell y'all something, though. You can't fake it to get into the spiritual world. Can't play it. You can't fraud your way into the spiritual world. No, I'm just trying to tell you because people be trying to do it. You cannot fraud your way. He says, Peter, the devil, the demon said, my man tried to cast some demons out. I cast you out in the, in the book of Acts. I cast you out. He had saw somebody in the anointing do it. He was like, oh, I like the way that looked. I don't want to have a relationship with the person that's given him that, but I want the rewards without the work. <laughs> Remember Onan when the Bible says he spilled his seed, he was supposed to have intercourse. Onan with his brother, he was supposed to have intercourse and he was supposed to give his brother a son. But Onan was like, no, I'm not feeling it. Like, I don't want to have intercourse with my brother's sister and then have a child and he going to get the credit for it. It's going to be named after him and go down. I'm not interested in doing that. He's like, I'm good on that. And he spilled his seed and God killed him. I don't believe God. I used to be like, why did God kill my man? Because he spilled his seed. What, what kind of God is this? I realized God didn't kill him because he spilled his seed. God killed him because he didn't want to get her pregnant, but he sure wanted to have sex with her. That's why God killed him. Oh, you want the reward. But you don't want the work that come with the reward. Now, if you just didn't want her to have a child, you should have just left her alone and said, I don't want you to, I don't want to have my brother's child. That's not what you did. What you did was you still enjoyed the pleasures of, but you didn't want to do the work of it. Come on, I'm talking to y'all. You want to know what's wrong with you and why you ain't blew up. God is saying, you're trying to get my rewards without even having a relationship with me. You're trying to walk around with the power that Jesus had, but you ain't trying to do what he did to get that power. So write this down. Two things I want you to understand. Write this down. Please put this in there. Send this to yourself. Number one, when you look at Jesus Christ, what made him different was that God was not a part of his life. He was the greatest part of his life. That's the problem with a lot of us. You, it ain't that you, God ain't a part of your life. He's just not the greatest part of your life. He's not the greatest part. He's a part. <laughs> He's just not the greatest part of your life. He like number four down the... Down, Number four, I love the Lord. I believe in God. I know the word. I pray. I, I know God exists, but I'm trying to get this bag. And the bag is number one. The bag got all your attention, your whole heart. I told somebody yesterday, it was like, yo, I'm trying to get on the stage. I'm trying to speak. I'm trying. I was like, not like that. They're like, what you mean not like that? I said, you're trying to do it so you can get paid. You think these people want to pay you to speak? That has. I said, I gave away content for free for I got 11 years of free content up. You ain't never got to pay to get me involved in nothing. You just watch my stuff and go to another level without paying me nothing. 99% of the work that I do is free. 1% of the people see that and bring me to their corporation. And then when I start charging a bunch, most of them are like, no, nah, we can't pay that. You listen to my stuff all those years, but you can't pay me. So 99% of my stuff is free. I don't do this to make money. So if you're getting on stage to do it for money, you're, not, you're probably not. There are those of you who could get so much more out of God, but because God is on your, on, he on your depth chart, like six. He on there. <laughs> no questions asked. He's there. 
But he ain't number one. The thing that made Jesus different, can y'all go, give me a couple more slides. I want to show them the basketball folk real quick. Can we go, go there? I got four minutes. Can we go to the basketball? I want to show y'all something real quick. Uh, uh, so, 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 so all of these individuals play in the league. They're all players. They're not all Michael Jordan. They're not all Kobe Bryant. They're not all Jordan. I want y'all to see something. They all, when y'all leave, I want you to decide what type of experience are you going to have with Christ. And I've always wanted to have a Michael Jordan boy. I, all, I, want, I always, listen to me. So you go through the word. I must name a couple names. But Jesus, God was not a part of his life. He was the greatest part of his life. And then Paul, Paul said to live is Christ, to die is gain. Paul got it. Paul said, they said, Paul, if you go over there and you keep talking that Christ talk, they're going to kill you over there. They ain't got that. They ain't in the Christ over there. You go over there and start preaching. They're going to take your life. Paul said they're going to have to take it then because if I go over there and I can't go over there with him, I can't. I don't want to live anyway. He says to live, to live is Christ. To live is Christ. All I want is Christ. I don't care nothing else. Christ. I ain't on money. Christ. I ain't on fame. Christ. I don't care if people know me. Christ. I don't care what I drive. Christ. I don't care what I go through. Christ. They took Paul. Read it in the book. They took Paul out and they beat Paul to death. Then they put him in a prison. They put chains on him. And the first thing he did when his life came back, he started praising the name of the Lord. Paul said, you can beat me, you can kill, you can do whatever you want. All I want is Christ. I don't want nothing else. Christ, to live is Christ, to die is gain. If I die for Christ, I gain. Your problem is you love Christ, but he's far on the depth chart. He number five. You're still trying to blow up. <laughs> You're still trying to blow up when if you would have just made Christ first, you would have been blew up. But he didn't want you to blow up in the natural. He's trying to get you to blow up. You done done 4,000 videos. You done spent all your kids' money, college money. You done got this your fourth agent you got. You done both fourth PR person. You're doing all that work when all you had to do is put him first and you would have... They, you, they, just, they would have just uh, for frail for free. Huh? Am I making myself clear? When you leave this place today, I'm not telling you number one, but if God is six, can we just bring him up to four? I want to show you all these stats real quick. Go, can you go to the stats with me? I'm going to get you all out of here. Let's go to these stats real quick. Let's go to these stats real quick. I flew in today. I know I still got a minute and 45. I'm going to use all my time. Probably a little couple minutes. A couple people came in late, so let's get, let them get a couple words. And too. Hey Amen. Praise God. Let's bless them. Let's bless their soul too. Watch this. Watch, watch this. This is the gallery of the power of Christ. This ain't, and the Bible says he didn't, most of the stuff he did, it wasn't even recorded. Here's what you're dealing with. Healing of the mother of Peter's wife. Healing the deaf, the mute. Healing the blind. Healing a paralytic. The blind man of Bethesda. The, the blind man Bartonimus, whatever, Bartonimus of Jericho, healing the centurion servant, uh, Christ healing an infirm woman. God, look at this Jews. Look at this Jews with no degree, mama, not probably teenager, mama pregnant in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you walking around shame, your son, although he killing the gang, his whole birth is a shame to you. People still don't believe you say he is who he is. They dogging your whole family out. Look at his juice, y'all. Look what happened when he get connected. You ain't got no juice because you connected to the natural. There's limited juice in the natural. There's limited juice in the natural. You start dealing with spiritual things. It's no, when you start dealing with spiritual things, they go, they, they talk, the Holy Ghost is talking in the rooms that you can't, you can't even be there. The Holy Ghost is there. You want a natural PR. You got a Holy Ghost that can be in all places at one time talking on your behalf and you want, you want a king. Egypt got a king. We want a king. What? Y'all got a God. What y'all want a king for when y'all got a God? I'm up here running, trying to get my blood pressure. I'm running two hours a day. I'm running, feet hurt, knees. 
They're like, E, what's up? Nothing. <laughs> what's wrong, bro, trying to get this blood pressure down? My daughter, dad, we going to eat. I can't eat that. I ran yesterday for 20 minutes. I did two miles like I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. 110 over 80. I'm finished. I'm done. Then got 20,000 steps in. I'm like, I ain't running no more. We just going to step. I had meetings. I'm like, don't meet me at the restaurant. Let's go walk. I, walk. I had three meetings. I walked to all three meetings. I ain't got to be doing this all day no more. If I feel like running for four miles for my five, five, and then I can walk the rest of the way. But it's way, it's way easier than all that other stuff I was doing. You're on your 10th property and you're still broke. Let's get, let's play. Uh, you still broke. Why? Because you're still doing it in the natural. I, I, may, I, may, I, may I show you? May I show you? Can I take you back to where I come from? I told y'all when they say, E, I don't know how, I don't know how you and Didi, I don't, I don't either. I don't, I, I promise you, I'm on what you own. You write about me. And where I come from, it's a, there's been generations of them. I don't know how I had two kids by the same one. And I don't know how, I don't know how I slept with one woman my whole life. I don't know how that happened. I don't know how God, how I, God, sister, you saying that song, Rescue? <laughs> the devil had me so close to get. God was like, boy, I got a plan for you. Get your boy back over here, boy. Get back over here. Huh? I'm like, uh-uh. God like, uh-uh, I got a plan for you, son. I got a work for you to do. Get your butt back over here. She said, God will rescue you. I said, no, nah, you got that wrong. You got to put an S on that. That's plural. This life, one day I woke up and said, we're going to have to cut the natural off. We're just going to have to operate in the spirit completely. Because God said, son, you're going back and forth, and you, you over here a lot, but you're sneaking over there. But jealous God. I'm not like him. I'm not like Satan. He'll let you sleep around. He'll let you go back and forth. I'm not like him. I'm jealous. I need all of you. I need your whole heart. I need your whole soul. I don't want you to read scriptures. These are not scriptures. These are words that God put in the book so you understand the relationship. It's not words. He says, I want. That's not a commandment. That's God speaking to you about the relationship. He's saying, I can't take 80-20. I can't take 70-30, son. I can't do it. The world will let you get away with that. I need your whole heart. I need your whole soul. I need your whole mind, son. I need everything you got. And then after that, I want some more. I'm God. And the reason I demand that of you, because if you look at my son, for God so loved the world, I gave everything. And I'm going to need you to give everything too. But I, but I ain't like Satan. You give him everything and you still come up short. And I'm talking to somebody right now. I want you to get ready. You work with Satan. You work for Satan. And you've come up short. Yep, look to me. I, I don't have, people, uh, you got something against drugs? I don't have nothing against drugs. I have nothing against drugs. But if you are a child of God, listen to me, I have nothing against drugs. But if you are a child of God, you got to tell me how doing the natural is going to get you into the spirit. Huh? You got to tell me how smoking weed about to get you walking on water. How you going to be able to heal the blood? How you going to have a throat? People call me, and when they call me, my mama got cancer. You think they want me playing with their mama? My son's possessed with a demon. Eric, can you talk? Can you pray with him? Can you get on the phone? Eric, my son is alcohol. Can you talk to him? You think I'm going to go in there with demons and play around with demons? God says, son, I, need, I, don't, I don't want you in the natural. There's nothing in that. There's nothing wrong with weed. If you're trying to live in the natural and get the things of the natural, but if you want to walk in the spirit, 
If you want everything your feet touch, I'm telling you, I can't take certain gigs. Why? Because if I go there and I speak, the anointing is going to come up and it's going to bless them. And some places don't deserve God's anointing. You should be walking. You should be walking and wherever you God say, be careful. It's scripture. Be careful, son. Joshua, be careful. Be careful, son. Be careful where you walk. Why? Because you got so much anointing on your feet. And wherever you touch, whatever touch the soles of your feet, son. From Jericho to the Euphrates, to the... What, what God was saying is, however far you can go, wherever your feet, there's anointed in your feet, but you don't have the anointed in your feet because you keep going from the natural to the spiritual. And you're ready today. I don't know who you are, but you're ready to stop running your play and you're ready to start running God's play. Where are you? You're standing. Where I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to look at me. I'm not who you think I am. I'm only saying that because I don't want you to look at me as a whole and then you get confused on, man, I can't never be that. You could be this and more. He rescued me. I was homeless, y'all. That's when he came and got me. I was homeless. I wasn't going to church. I was homeless. And that's where he came and got me. I couldn't read. I couldn't write. That's where he came and got me. You're looking at where I am now and you're saying, man, that's a long distance. No. I was probably further than where some of you are right now when he started with me. This is God's spiritual project. Come on, come on, come on. This is God's spiritual project. This is, this is God's rescue assignment. This is what an, a rescue assignment looks like. This is what it looks like when you rescue somebody and you, they become your project. You're not in this alone. God's trying to demonstrate to the world what he can do and you're not letting him. You keep going back to the world. You keep going back to worldly stuff. And God is like, shoot, you've been gone for two years. I was trying, I was doing something. I was on, I had a rhythm going. I was finally getting you shaped. You done went out there and now you done got all messed up. I got to start all over from scratch. You're not in this by yourself. You God's project. You're not in it by yourself. God brought you into this world for a specific reason. You're making God look bad. God, you're not alone. This ain't just about you. There's a creator that created you. I was on the road with my family just recently. It was cold in Michigan. We were driving back. It was pouring down raining. And my wife said to me that something's wrong. You got your foot on the gas? I said, yeah, I got my foot on the gas. She said, you can't feel that? I said, feel what? She said, we were at 80, now we're at 60, 50. What's, what's wrong? I said, ain't nothing wrong. She said, what you mean ain't nothing wrong? I can feel it. I said, ain't nothing wrong. This is a, this is a 2023 Escalade. With 10,000 miles. Ain't nothing wrong. Five minutes later, the whole car stopped. Got off the road, got to... Cadillac on Monday pissed I said bro I spent a hundred and some thousand dollars on this vehicle it's a Cadillac you mean to tell me whoever was on the line making this that they didn't care enough about their product to make sure that everything was good before they sold it you sold me a piece of junk and then you're gonna give me a rental car you won't give me a car that ain't a Cadillac. I need to talk to somebody. I bought a Cadillac for a specific reason. I don't know who was working on this, but whoever you paid to work on it, they didn't do what they supposed to do. God had options and he chose you. And many of you are not doing, you ain't representing. You're not representing the product. You're not representing the God that created you. It's personal. I did my part. I gave my only begotten son. I did my part. I sent angels. I did my part. I sent the Holy Ghost. I did my part. I gave you the Bible. I did my part. You got angels. I did my part. I got other believers. I did my part. I'm not doing your part. Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't come in the natural 
because we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, I come in the spirit of Jesus Christ. I come in the spirit of the Holy Spirit and somebody's ready to be what you call them to be and do what you call them to do. Hallelujah. Somebody is ready to do what you call them to do and be what you call them to be right now. Somebody's ready to lead this place, not be perfect. They're ready to go forward. I ask that the same spirit that came and got me off the streets in 1986, that that same spirit would show up today. That that same spirit of rescue will come rescue your babies right now. Forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. Have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. If you believe, you're going forward. Come on. Come on. If you believe, you're going forward. Come on. Come on. If you believe, you're going forward. Come on. If you believe, you're going forward. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus right here on Facebook. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.